Dog Fancier has been in existence since 1949, I believe, before my time, obviously. Um, and they put on, every year, they put on a confirmation show that has, that's the breed show with obedience and rally and that kind of stuff that happens in May, usually on Mother's Day weekend. Um, then there's the agility portion of it. We put on two three-day trials a year, one right after the confirmation trial in May and then this one in October. Agility trials are, are games um, where a handler and his dog or her dog um, run a preset course and based on height and time and fastest dog within a height wins basically. Uh, typically you're just competing against yourself for a qualifying score and after so many qualifying scores then AKC sends you ribbons and titles and fun things like that. There are basically two main versions. One is called Jumpers with Weaves, where they have jumps, weave poles, and usually a tunnel, but not mandatory to have a tunnel. Um, and then there's a standard course, which has a dog walk and an A-frame and a teeter-totter, jumps, weave poles, and maybe a tunnel or maybe not. It's open to all kinds of dogs, and you see all kinds of dogs doing it. There are breeds that excel at it, uh, Border Collies, Shetland Sheepdogs, Australian Shepherds, they're the ones that kind of have the, the speed and whatnot. Um, but there's also a lot of German Shepherds that run really fast, uh, Malinois, Belgian Shepherds. There's even a couple Bulldogs that I've seen do agility that usually come to the Klamath shows. Um, Dachshunds, uh, Pugs. Uh, so just any breed can do it. Having a, a good relationship with your dog so that they read your body language and conversely you can read theirs. Um, I mean speed obviously helps but accuracy sometimes beats out speed. For, there's three levels, novice, open, and excellent slash masters. At the high end level you can't make any mistakes so no knocked bars, you have to hit the yellow part of the contacts, uh, it has to be under whatever the course time is that the judges figure out. Um, at the intermediate level, you get to make a couple mistakes. Still can't knock any bars, but you can uh, like take a wrong course and then come back and correct it. Um, and at novice, you get to make but like three mistakes. So you can do a, what they call a refusal to refusals. That's where they run up to an obstacle and maybe spin. It's mm -hmm. like, you really want me to do this? And then you go ahead and get them to do it. You can do a couple of those and you can have an off course. The novice dogs tend to be the most fun ones to watch because they get the zoomies a lot of times. It's like, okay, we're out here. This is my first time. I'm going to run around the ring in circles five times, do the tunnel six times, and somewhere in here, maybe I'll pay attention to my handler. It tends to be funny. My One of my dogs, when he was first starting, um, went over three jumps, jumped over the baby gates out of the ring, said hi to his new best friend, and then jumped back in, and we kept going. So... <laughs> There are, you know, stuff happens. <laughs> a lot of times handlers that have trained horses, they tend to be pretty good at this um, because uh, even though they're riding the horse when they're doing their competitions, it's still real similar. So they have to understand the, the body language and the nuances of whatever animal there is the other half of their team. So anybody that is good at understanding their animal and reading the animal's body language and the body cues that they give off and understanding what body cues they have to give and how the dog understands them do really well at this stuff. The other people that do really well are those that's like, I don't care if I look stupid, I'm just having fun.